woman gets lonely, you know, sometimes maybe takes one drink too many. A woman likes to talk. That's the reason the pretty face you've seen around some of the clubs for a little while is suddenly seen no more. That was Kitty Dollar, that was Gracie Stark, Rose Teed, and there was Paula Gould. My name is Barney Roditsky. 20 years, gangster squad, New York City Police Department. Who called in? Hi, Pop. Well, I, I was just telling him, bundle all clothes or something. You know what I mean? I, I thought it was a bundle all clothes. <coughs> now, go on, go on, take one. What time you come on duty tonight? Midnight. Work 12 to 8. See anybody around the pier tonight? No, no, no. Quiet. Last night, night before? No, quiet every night. Work 12 to 8. 20 bucks a week. Quiet every night. 12 to 8. Mean you sit in that shack every night, huh? 12 to 8, just nibbling on that smoke? <laughs> What's your figure, Doc? Two weeks. I'd say two weeks in the river. Make it about the uh, 18th. No better when I do the PM. Brick shoes, subway train. Mm. Yeah, she wouldn't have floated very far with these on her. Nope, she must have been pushed in. Someplace off this pier. That smaller shoe, the one fastened to her neck, wouldn't have held her down two weeks. But that larger one, it acted as an anchor till the air pockets formed and pushed her up. And they're not the same type, you notice, Max? We haven't been using this kind for years. IRT subway system, Bell Cast Iron Works, 1905. 20 years. You know, that one on her neck. Too many of them in use in too many places, but we find a mate for this one might give us the location of the murder. Hmm. We got a heavy case, Max. Not if we can find a location, at least we got to start. Thanks, Doc. And these are the brake shoes. This uh, larger one here is obsolete. Oh, well, take a crew over to the IRT train yards there on 155th Street. Find a mate to it. Have you seen those yards, Barney? They've been piling brake shoes there for 20 years, higher than the Catskills. How many men you need? Well, I could use 500, but uh, get me 20. Okay, put them to work. Sure. Better get visiting privileges for the family once a week, just for the morale. The seven-strand wire we cut from Paula Gould. Research lab checked it out. Local manufacture. Ran down the small operation on West 14th Street. The manufacturer recognized his product gave us the addresses of the three outlets he supplied with seven-strand wire. It wasn't until we hit the Yorkville store on East 86th Street that we, we caught a faint nibble. Hi. What can I do for you? You want a uh, seven-strand wire? Certainly. Certainly. Yeah. See that's the same? Exactly, gentlemen. You've come to the right place. You sell much of this? Oh, not too much. Now and then, not too often. You sell any lately? Oh, the last time I think was, uh, oh, about a couple of weeks ago, I... Why? Why do you ask? Because we just want to know if you sold any lately, that's all. Yeah, but why do you want to know? Police headquarters. Oh? Uh -huh. Yeah, and I want you to tell me who bought this wire from you. Maybe it was bought in another store. No. Now it was bought here, you sold it. You said so yourself a couple of weeks ago. Now, who did you sell it to? I don't remember. What's the matter, are you afraid of him? No. No, why should I be afraid of him? He's a nice looking fellow, he... So you do remember him? Maybe. Just a little bit. Listen, I don't want... 
Don't get me mixed up in this. I have a family, a, a store. What's he look like? Well, he... I don't have to answer that. Listen, we're not looking for a booster. We're looking for a killer. Now, you'll answer us here and now, or we'll lock up the shop and take you downtown. I'll take your pick. All right, what did he look like? Color of hair, color of eyes. Brown. Uh, brown hair, I think, uh, and dark eyes. How tall? Like you, maybe. No, more like this gentleman here. This stranger you never saw him before? How's he dressed? Dressed? Yeah. Suit. What color? Hat? Yeah, hat, gray. Nice Stetson, expensive. He talk, uh, you know, with an accent? Or... No, no, no. He's a clean-cut American. You recognize him, you see him again. You'd recognize him. I don't know. What's your name? Sachs. Max Sachs. All right, Mr. Sachs, we'll be in touch with you. We need it. In my message box, a report from Sergeant in charge of train yard crew. Mate to breaks you found. Now we knew where the girl had been killed, where the wire had been bought. All we needed was the killer's name. I checked in with the medic for autopsy report. And I... Hi, Barney, Max. They got a PM report on that Harlem River case. Male or female? Female, age 24, 25, 5 feet 6 or 7. Mm -hmm. Female, female. Harlem River. Yes, here we are. Subject unknown female, age approximately 26, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Cause of death, strangulation. Not drowning. No water in lungs. Subject appeared to be. I guess this is the part you want. Subject died not more than one hour after eating last meal. Just like at Sing Sing, eh? <laughs> Come on, Professor, what do you get on there? Food and stomach, undigested residue of spaghetti, clam sauce, Italian red wine. We ran a chem test on the spaghetti. It checks out as a commercial brand sold only to restaurants in bulk. Got a report here from Brands Research. Spaghetti is of semolini type, manufactured by five different companies. Three on the Lower East Side, two over on Ninth Avenue. There's a list. Mm-hmm. Time stock. Anything else? Yes. She must have had a cast iron stomach. Found something there that doesn't belong in the same place at the same time with spaghetti, clams, and red wine. Yeah. This kid wolfed a couple of hot dogs topped with sauerkraut yet. How do you like that? How long before the spaghetti? Almost immediately. Some kid, eh? What's your figure, Max? She has a date for dinner at some Italian joint. Maybe with the boy who shows her across. Maybe she gets there early and she's hungry. Yeah, probably one of those little restaurants don't open before the dinner hour, you know, home-style cooking and... She got there early, a hot dog stand nearby, so to kill time, she... And her appetite. So we look for an Italian restaurant near a hot dog stand. Yeah. Thanks, Doc. Know something, Barney? Mm -hmm. The kid was doomed. She hadn't been strangled. The spaghetti, clams, red wine, sauerkraut, hot dogs. Boom. Arrivederci. Hot dogs and sauerkraut close to an Italian restaurant. We asked. The second spaghetti manufacturer had a driver that knew everything. Yeah, sure. Luigi's on third in their night. You want a real good hot dog and kraut? Go to Sam's. I heard he makes 10 G's a year just off hot dogs and kraut. I'd believe anything about hot dogs and kraut. Luigi's. Third and ninth. My name is Roditsky, police headquarters. See, si. Looking for a girl, might be one of your customers. <laughs> See, si, uh, what, uh, and, uh, what's her name? Oh, we don't know. She's about 24, 25 years old. Five feet, six, seven. Red hair? Um, red hair, eh? Hmm. Last time she ate here, a couple of weeks ago, she had spaghetti and clam sauce. Mm, pasta con fungheli. Mm -hmm. It seems maybe like, um... No, I don't remember. The way you have a picture of her might help you remember. I'd like you to take a look at it. It isn't very pretty, but... She's not a pretty girl, huh? She was, once. She's dead. Uh, oh. 
povere bambina. Well? Ah, si. Sì. She, she, she's a very nice girl. She come here not too many times, but uh, she's a nice, friendly girl. Do you remember her name? Uh, uh, she, uh, she uh, dead now? Yes. Uh, but uh, how, what happened? Oh, we don't know yet. We're trying to identify it. Do you remember her name, Luigi? Uh, I never hear her name, but uh, she come here a few times with a nice fellow. I remember his name. See, si, he come here all the time, uh, for a longer time. See, si, he is a Jack of Green, a very nice fellow. You know where he lives? Uh, no, I don't know, but he got a bigger business on the 7th Avenue. The Green Dress Company on the 7th Avenue. Of course. Of course, I want to help you. How could you expect a man to remember every... I mean, after all, I'm a busy man. I see lots of people. Out-of-town buyers, salespeople, men and women designers, cutters, models. I mean, you asked me if I know if I saw a girl two weeks ago. Now, how can you expect... I mean, I want to help you, but... Five feet seven, 25 years old, red hair. Yeah, yeah, that's what you said. Well, that sounds like uh, any one of a dozen different girls I might know. Maybe that'll help you. We talk to Luigi, Mr. Green. Come on. You know Luigi? Uh, Mr. Green, now how about it? Yeah. Yeah, I know her. What's her name? Gould. Paula Gould. Keep talking, Mr. Green. What happened to her? Maybe you can tell us. I swear to you, no, I don't... No, no, that won't be necessary. Come on, now, just tell us about it. I feel sick. Sick. A year ago, she she worked for me. She was a model. She was a nice girl. Took an interest in her. I wanted to help her. Aren't you married, Mr. Green? Yes. Children? Yes. Finally catches up with you, doesn't it, Mr. Green? Look, there was nothing. When did you last see her? She, she called me. She sounded frightened. I, I met her at Luigi's. What was she afraid of? She say? That they had threatened her. That she talked too much when she drank. Well, why did you go after Luigi's? I went outside with her. She went across the street to a car that was waiting. What kind of a car? A Stearns. I think a Stearns. A Stearns touring car. There were, there were, there were two men there. It was dark, but I could see that there were, there were two men. License plates, did you? Happen to see him? No. Was there anything uh, out of the ordinary about the car? Anything special? No, there was nothing. The license plates. As, as the car pulled away, I saw the, the plate on the back of the car. Not the numbers, but the color. It wasn't the color of the New York plates. You know what state it was? No. What colors? No, I can't remember. But I'm sure it wasn't the New York colors. She waved at me. The car pulled away. She smiled. All right, Mr. Green, we'll be in touch with you if we need you. Mr. Roditsky. He didn't say what he was trying to say. He didn't have to. It was written all over his face. He was pathetically ashamed. If his wife found out, well, that's another story. The Pier Watchman. It wasn't easy cutting through the fog to his brain, but finally we hit a small clear patch. Yes, he did see a car two weeks ago on the pier, a touring car. Figured it was just some neckers, and he told them to move along. We hit Paula's last known residence. Haven't seen one of your tenants for two weeks? You're not concerned? No. It's nothing unusual. She'd go away for a week or ten days, just lock the apartment. That's none of my business. What is your business? Seeing that the rent is paid on time. Who paid the rent? Oh, she did herself, always. Where she got the money, I don't know. It's none of my business. Hey, you ever, you ever see any of her visitors? 
Oh, I always mind my own business. Yeah, and see, the I... rent is paid on time, I know. Look, didn't she okay. ever leave word where she went any time in case it might be important? No. And I want a straight answer. She would go to Monticello. Oh, Monticello. Mm-hmm. The Pines Hotel, Monticello. All right, we can go now. Well, I just wanted to say that I... I know would... what you wanted to say. I'm not interested. Thank you. Yeah. Her Bible, huh? Lots of names. Divided into two sections, legit and mob. See, here's Jack Green. Here. That name ring a bell? Sonny Warren. Just like a firehouse. An enforcer for the Dutchman operates out of Jersey. Mm. Out of state plates, Stern's touring car. So we go see Sonny Warren. <laughs> piece of pickle juice action, Roditsky. You hungry for a cheap pinch? Now, this one's gonna be expensive. So I'm carrying a piece, so book me. I will book you, all right, but not for the piece. Hey, you got an okay to come up here to the Bronx from the Dutchman? No, from Paula Gould. Come on. Tony, you're a cheap punk. You're stupid. You're... My name is Ashley. Oh, shut up. Barney, let me persuade him, will you? I love pushing punks like him out of the window. Yeah, maybe that's why they put bars on the window to protect citizens like me. Mags, get up here, you. <coughs> My name is Anthony Warren. I'm in the mint business, and I got me... We got I... two witnesses, Tony. They saw the car. They saw the Jersey plates. Your address is in Paula's book. Here. See? I told you once. I told you twice. I'll tell you again. My name is Anthony. Where's the car, Tony? What do you do, sink it? Nice car like that? It's a contract job, wasn't it, for the Dutchman? What, do you want to take the fall yourself? We're letting you in, Tony. You can testify. We'll take the Dutchman. He'll stand up in court. We got cooperating witnesses. We got a stand-up witness, a legit citizen. He saw you pick up Paula in front of Luigi's. My name is Anthony, Anthony Warren. Warren. You're in the mint business. Why do we bother with the bump? Rodetsky. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Okay. Book him. The DA says book him. He thinks he's got enough. He's pushing for an indictment right now. No. No, I don't like it. Huh? It's a warrant case. We're gonna blow it. Oh, you figure, Barney. The trial is set for tomorrow, right? Fast, huh? His own mouthpiece pushed for it. He didn't even make a move to have the indictment dismissed on lack of evidence. He wants Warren to stand trial. Now. And once he's acquitted, he walks. We've blown it for good. We need more time. Speak to the DA, postponement. Yeah, no dice. Defense demands early trial. DA figures he's got enough evidence, but I... I don't like if we can only find that Stern's touring car, you know? Get the lab man to work it over. That heap's been cut up into small pieces by now. Uh, this is Rodisky. Get me uh, Captain Gavin of New Jersey State Police. Right. No, well, Max, maybe you put your finger on it. I did? Maybe. Hello. Yes, Captain. Yes, Captain, how are you? Fine. Fine, thanks. Uh, Captain, a favor, please. Yeah, you got your stolen car list? Uh-huh, a, uh, a Stearns. I don't know, a touring car, I don't know what color. Maybe a 24, 25. 
She'll be registered in the name of Anthony Warren. W-A-R-R-E-N. Right. Yeah. What? When, Captain? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, Captain, thanks a lot. Bye. Well, that's it, Max the Ace. They were going to pull at the trial. The car was reported stolen as of June the 17th. The date we fixed the killing in the indictment was the 18th. It's a throwout. So that's it. That was their insurance in case the car was spotted. And the Dutchman probably ordered Warren to sink the car after the job. Yeah, but I know that Warren. He's a cheap, petty punk. He'd want to get it both ways, you know? He'd want to get paid for the car from the Dutchman and then keep it without the Dutchman knowing about it. Get your hat. Where are we going? Monticello. The Stearns Touring Car. We found it. In a shed behind the Pines Hotel in Monticello. We stake it out. First day, no one came near it. We held the stake out. But the trial would be underway on the second day. Morning of the second day, the girl came out of the hotel, got into the car, and we waited for her to kick the motor over. Now you get out of here right now. Keep you your get hands car? off of me. Hmm? Listen, I got a right. You ain't pinning no stolen car wrap on me. No, it's a murder wrap. Murder? Yeah. You and Tony Warren, he killed a girl named Paula Gould in this no. car. You helped him. No, no, no. He, he, hey, wait a minute. He just gave me this car. He told me he was going to report a stolen and collect the insurance on it. But I didn't have nothing to do with this. I swear it. He just told me to bring it up here and stash it away. Oh. But you ain't got nothing. I didn't have... When did he give it to you? Well, I remember, I remember exactly, because uh, it was on a weekend and I was in New York. He, he told me to bring the car up here and not use it, but that's all. When? The 20th, Friday, June 20th. The 20th, two days after the job. Follow me in, Max. Come on. I hold a photostat of a report to the New Jersey State Police and the Jersey Motor Vehicle Bureau. Now, the prosecution has established by their own evidence that Paula Gould met her death on the 18th day of June. But these official documents from the New Jersey authorities prove that it was impossible for Anthony Warren to have been in that Stearns touring car on the 18th day of June, because on the 17th day of June, Anthony Warren reported to the police that his Stearns touring car had been stolen. Your Honor, I beg the indulgence of the court. The state has just been made aware of a witness vital to the interest of justice in this case. And I beg the permission to now call that witness to the stand. Uh, Your Honor, I permission must Permission granted. I now call to the stand Miss Marie Walters. Thanks a lot, Barney. When he pulled that stolen car report, we were finished. It was a throwout. But now we're back in business again. Pleasure, Counselor. A real pleasure. Well, you don't report him for the Dutchman? Yeah. Good job, Barney. Thanks. Thanks a lot. I'll fix one for you and the Dutchman someday, huh? Sure. Keep trying. Hey, level with me. The Dutchman told Tony Warren to get rid of that heap, didn't he? I don't know nothing. I don't even know the rat. Cheap punk. He deserves to fry. 